Alright everybody, welcome back to Firehaven. I, I want to apologize for my absence. Things, you know, like John Lennon said from the Beatles, life is what happens when you're busy making plans. This time I'm going to try millipedes. Uh, that's probably my starter. I always wanted to get a, an invertebrate that was easy to take care of, that got people's attention right away because there's such a variety of different millipedes. Uh, from different areas around the world. This tank is where I keep my desert species. They require less work because you don't have to keep it so uh, humid. You don't have to keep it so wet. Um, if you can see right up here, we have two right off the bat. They're both the same species. They're both Orthoporus ornatus, but there's different morphs, if you will. You've got your... Th these come from the Texas, Arizona, northern Mexico area, so they can handle a lot drier um, environments. They don't need a lot of water. If it rains, you know, they'll they'll get out of the rain. They, so they and they'll, they'll bury bury themselves a little bit. But we've got the Sonoran chocolate millipede, and then we also have the what well, some people will call the Texas gold. They're just a different type of morph, if you will, but they're in the same genus, uh, which is the Orthoporus ornatus. Um, I have a couple of each. And I don't know if you can see down here. It's really small, out of focus, but I have one of the Texas Golds down here molting. He's going to be down there for like a month, if not more. Uh, just a month ago, I had one of these guys molting, and it scared me. Because he was down there forever. He didn't come up, he didn't eat, it looked really dry. But as long as you miss the top, let a little bit of moisture come down, he'll be fine. So I'll keep an eye on this guy, but it always scares me when they're down there for a long time. Because you often think, well, is this thing dead? Or is it just molting? And, and you got to be very careful if you check on them. You get a... You'll, you'll want to get a brush and just kind of brush the, the substrate away and check on them. If you see a little bit of movement, you're good. Cover them back up. I'll pull one out and let you see what they look like. All right, so you'll see here they're both cozied up real nice. Uh, the black one or the dark one here is my chocolate, uh, Sonoran chocolate millipede, and then the gold uh, they don't mind being around each other. They, they really don't discriminate. Maybe they're just birds of a feather. They understand that they're one and the same. Uh, they get along great. Uh, so, you know, very pretty, very bright, very shiny. Uh, this one, yeah, this is the one that molted recently. Hopefully you can pick it up, but there's almost like a greenish tint. That's the newest, you know, Molt, uh, well, I don't know if you'd call it the newest molt, but his newest exoskeleton, when he's ready to molt again, he's going to get much darker, kind of hazy looking, and then he's going to dig down. So yeah, that's those are two of my big boys there. Like I said, with this being a desert species, you don't have to put a lot of moisture. I'm, I'm actually going to put a little bit of moisture in here for them. Uh, if, you, if you notice a little bit of haziness on here, it's, it really has, it's not dirty, it's just here in Utah we have hard water, there's a lot of crap in our water, so uh, that's what happens when you, st when you start out, you know, I, I use a distilled water now, but when you start out and you don't have, if you don't know to put distilled water, you're going to get the haze. Just get some vinegar and a little scrub pad and it comes right off, I'm just lazy. Uh, but I'm actually going to do one thing real quick and that's change out their cotton balls. I tend to put it over in a corner where I intend to have most of the moisture that I add. A lot of times I will find millipedes just hanging out under the dirt in this area where it gets most of the moisture. And I always have a gradient, uh, wet to dry. Uh, I would invest in some type of a sprayer. I don't know what this is originally used for, but it does give a, a good fine mist. You can bring it all the way down to a stream. I tend to put a, a sphagnum moss over in the corner, spray that down real good, just so there's definitely a spot where they can, 
kind of cozy up in the in the moss. And then I finally missed the sides mostly. Now with with me having this one molting down below, I want to give him a little extra in that area and let it seep down, but I don't want to drown him. So what I'll do is I'll give it a good a good misting and then I'll monitor. It looks like it's mostly going down the side. Um, I'll probably want it to just get a little bit of moisture up on top of him. But that's really the, the easiest millipede for you to take care of is a desert species. Enclosure wise I try to have sticks just for entertainment, just something to crawl on. Cork bark is always great. Something to climb in, something to hide, multiple hides. I have a cork bark here, cork bark here. Of course the sphagnum moss and as far as the substrate goes you want to get the millipede something that they can eat. Just like the Euromastix, I said his is the uh, only type of lizard I know of that the substrate is the food. Same thing with the dirt. I order it from bugsincyberspace.com, Peter Clausen, because he, he puts leaf litter as well as chunks of oak, and some people add calcium to their soil. So basically they eat what they have already in their soil, you can choose to throw a little bit of grains like some uh, lettuce or some dandelion or just whatever you want, even some fruits, but the majority of their food is going to be in their substrate. Um, so that's the desert ones. I highly recommend getting an orth Orthoporus ornatus, uh, but I'm going to also show you some tropical type, you know, hu humidity level uh, millipedes. So that'll be my next one I'm going to show you. Alright, on to the tropical millipedes. So this ugly looking tank is what I started out with. This is a bugarium. I started this out with roaches for it being small and eventually the roaches just got so many I had to go with something bigger for them. Uh, this is perfect for my tropical species of millipedes because in my mind the less the area you have, the higher the humidity is going to likely be. You, it's easier to maintain the the wetness inside, the humidity inside, um, and I I think with, with having the extra moss in here is going to help with that too. Keeping the substrate a little deeper, I think they enjoy that. So what I keep inside here are Florida ivory millipedes, the scarlet millipedes, which I hear a rumor started out at some point in Asia and then were brought over to South America and then brought up to the United States, other Asia tropical type of species. And then I also have the uh, bumblebee millipede in here. They all get along because they all kind of, in a way, are the same type. I mean, they like it to be a little more wet, they like it to be a little more humid, they like to crawl around. They, they like, I catch them on top of the screen all the time, crawling around, crawling around on each other. They, they're very communal species of millipedes. So I'm going to take the top up and take a few things out. But I'm going to show you a couple of these bad boys. You'll, you'll notice I have a lot of leaves in here. These are magnolia leaves. They really love eating these. Um, I, I do put things like aspen leaves in here. So these littler ones are aspen. Um, I always have a couple uh, cotton balls in little deli cups in here. Um, same thing I told you before about it being a breeding ground for bacteria. So if you're going to do that route for, for giving them water, change them every week or two. Um, and a lot of sphagnum moss. They, they, since they like their moisture, they also like to crawl through the, through the, uh, the moss. Alright, so all in one hand we've got the scarlet, the bumblebee, and the ivory. As you can see, different uh, thicknesses or girth. No, I guess it would, yeah, I think it's, the word is girth. The scarlets tend to be real skinny. Not too long. This is probably about as big as it's going to get. Bumblebees will get a little bit bigger. They're, pretty, they're little fatties though, but definitely you can see the black and yellow striping, which is why they get their name Bumblebee. And then um, the ivories tend to look a little bit like a backgammon board. 
just the uh, the weird little I don't know what you'd call that, but uh, but yeah, they uh, they all are tropical. They all get along, communal. Uh, they love to poop on you, as you can see here. Little disclaimer here: if you put these three together, you're gonna end up with babies. Um, I always get confused if it's the scarlets and the bumblebees, or if it's the bumblebees and the ivories, or the scarlets and the ivories. But there's two within here that have babies. You could have a litter of all these baby millipedes and not really know what you got because they all come out looking white, small, like little larvas, and you don't know what you got until they start growing, molting, and then you start seeing some colors coming out of them. So putting these three together, you could end up with having scarlets, bumblebees, or ivories. It's kind of a roulette wheel of millipedes. Uh, basically, this is probably the most simple thing you can do. Just deep dirt, moss, and some uh, deli cups with a cotton ball. You're good to go. Uh, I'm going to actually show you the fruits of all of their labor um, because they do have babies. I'll tell you a little bit more about that on my next little tank. This is actually what I kept all of the adult millipedes in. I let them do their business and they laid their babies and eggs in this. So that's why they're in now in that, that other uh, little bug area. The, the reason why I do that is because when they're so small, eggs, newly hatched little nymph, I don't know what you'd call a baby millipede, but uh, the thing about baby millipedes is in order for them to be able to break down, eat, process things like leaf litter, oak, wood, what have you, is they have to build up their gut flora. So just like you and I, we we have bacteria. Some people take probiotics and prebiotics and all of that stuff to break down all of this food in our stomach. Millipedes have the same thing, but what's gross about it is the way they build up that gut flora is eating their parents' poop. So there's all kinds of millipede poop in here on top of a little bit of leaf litter and all of that, but primarily the first part of their life is eating their parents' crap. And that builds up the ability to break down things like wood and leaves. Uh, I don't have to do anything to this. I'll, I'll get a close-up and, and hopefully I can show you what the babies look like. But really all you got to do for the first few months of these babies' lives is keep it moist and make sure that there's adult poop in there and they'll be good to go. And then as they start getting a little bigger, they'll be a lot easier to manage, pick them up. Maybe you can move them into a different little um, enclosure, tank, uh, a, a cup of some sort, whatever you want. Uh, but at this point, they're so fragile, you don't want to be digging through, looking for stuff. Just spray it and walk away. Because I think you'd feel really bad if you were digging through and killing the babies. It, all right, well, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, I just wanted to go over millipedes in general uh, because they are a very easy invertebrate to take care of. I think that it's a good starter pet if you don't want to go the spider route. I would say desert millipede, number one, tropical type of millipede, number two, and then maybe delve into other types of arachnids and uh, invertebrates later. Uh, but as you can see from the Big enclosure, very dry with the desert ones, the really, really small one for the tropical, and, well, babies, they're, they're just their own thing. All right, well, I hope you had as much fun uh, with millipedes as I enjoy uh, taking care of them. If you have any questions about the millipedes that I've discussed, throw them down in the comment field. If you have any ideas for future videos, give me the suggestion. I'm open to it. And uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram as well, I'm a little more regular in posting things on Instagram. It's my handle is at firebugs, and that's P-H-Y-R-E-B-U-G-Z. I will put it right about here. Uh, if you enjoyed this, give me a like. Uh, you can even share it, let people know that I'm out there. Uh, and uh, down here is a bell, ring that thing so you get future updates. And uh, till then, stay safe.